Hello and welcome to Lofty Pursuits and Public Displays of Confection in Tallahassee, Florida, where we make hard candy. I'm Greg, and today we're going to make some bubbly champagne drops. Yep, champagne-flavored candy that will bubble in your mouth. We first did this bubbly effect in a champagne video, our video number 90, where we discuss the origin of the countdown for New Year's. Watch it, I think you'll find it's a cool story. But we ended up making it as image candy, and the clear wrap of the image candy kept the bubbling effect from happening till you sucked on the candy for a while. We thought we could give a more immediate effect if we made this into round drops. And I don't need any more of an excuse to use our candy drop roller from the 1870s. So far we poured the hot sugar on the candy cooling table with the color and flavoring already added and now it's time to add the magic. And in this case the magic's going to be bicarbonate of soda and citric acid. We combine this with the candy and when it hits the moisture in your mouth it's going to explode like a childhood science fair volcano. But this will happen in your mouth giving you the sensation of the champagne's carbonation. Now the candy has been partially cooled by the candy cooling table, you may notice that part of the candy is left without any of the powder on it. This is because I want to use some clear candy, or yellow in this case, as stripes for the drops. I want to put irregular swirly stripes in these drops, not all of them, but some of them. I want to give the bag a sense of motion, like we trap the bubbles from champagne in this candy. Video number 90 was about champagne and New Year's, and it was looking at why we do the countdown for New Year's, and that was connected back to the history of rocketry. Now we're going to go to the history of ships, because it's been bothering me. Why do we break a bottle of champagne over the bower of a ship when it's christened? Heck, why do we even christen a boat? Citric acid mix is pretty easy for some reason with the candy, but bicarbonate of soda does not. It fights getting mixed in evenly. So we're going to have to turn it and knead it a lot. And we knead it like bread, and then, and then we take it onto the candy hook, where we're going to pull it again and again. This is to brighten the candy a bit, but we do this all the time with image candy to make whites. In this case, it has more of a mixing effect, because we need this evenly distributed. If not, you're going to taste the bicarbonate of soda when it's on your tongue, and we need it to react evenly with the acid when it hits your mouth. If you want to try this candy for yourself, just click on the link in the description of the eye up above and go over to www.pd.net. We ship worldwide. So when we're building the stripes, let's go back into time when the sea was an important thing and the sea was ruled by gods like Poseidon. And this is where the christening started. It started as a way, in many cultures, to bless the boat for safety. You would bring in priests, you would give libations, and you would make sacrifices. In ancient Greece, they poured wine into the ocean and onto the ship for Poseidon to enjoy, and maybe he'd think of the boat favorably. In places like England in the 1500s and early 1600s, they would take a jewel-studded metal cup of wine and they would throw it into the ocean after applying some on the bow of the ship. This was to appease the gods with the wealth. Perhaps a lucky person found the cup, or perhaps the god just grabbed it and it sunk into the ocean. As the navy of Britain grew, these became very expensive, and they stopped using the jewel-studded cups. And they started pouring just wine over the boat, and eventually breaking bottles of wine, with an exception. In Scotland, if the boat was made there, they'd use a bottle of scotch. But it wasn't specifically champagne. That came later. If you notice, this is built a little like a candy cane, and we've got to put it in a batch roller to keep it spinning. We don't want it to go flat or it'll mess up the stripes. Unlike candy canes, we don't want the stripes straight, we want them to wiggle. For a long time it wasn't always champagne, I mean teetotalers would break bottles of grape juice or pour grape juice over the bow, and usually a fine wine was used. And then champagne, which for a while was considered the finest wine of them all. And that tradition happened at the same time boats became steel in the early 1890s. Which coincidentally is when these drop rollers that are currently pressing the drops were made. This one was made in 1871, but the 1890s was the heyday of this time period. It was also when the first metal boats came in. While I'm sure champagne was used for boats in France, the first evidence of it being used in North America was done by the Secretary of Navy's daughter when she christened the USS Maine, the Navy's first steel battleship. And that seems to be about the moment this tradition got locked in stone. It may not have been practical to use champagne before that moment. You see, the bottles are so thick for champagne, it may have taken a steel boat to actually break them. We pick up the sheets of these candies and we drop them to break them, and this is why they're called drops. Champagne drops, lemon drops, and cough drops. 
Thank you for watching. We really appreciate it. If you can, subscribe to us here on YouTube. You could be our 1 millionth subscriber. That is if you get about 500,000 of your friends to subscribe first. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and you can get on our email list and our website, www.pd.net, where you can also get all of our wonderful candy. And you can find our podcast wherever podcasts are. Click on the podcast button at www.pd.net and listen to our weekly podcast. If you are a Patreon subscriber, you get our podcast a month early. Thank you again for watching. We really do appreciate it.